Okay, everybody, really short break, like I said. I just wanted to get some water. I was really thirsty. I really got thrown off by that mouse. I'm going to keep a mouse handy from now on. Okay, everybody, now I am going to open up the mic for William, and uh, he's going to be coming at us from, that's right, from Thailand, a little island off the coast. I don't remember the name exactly where, but he'll let you know. So, all right, let's get him on mic. Can you hear me now? Ty Willie, how you doing? Hey, Chris, how are you? Ty Willie from Thailand, how are you doing? Let me turn up my volume a little bit more. I can I can hear you just a, a little bit, but welcome to the show. So cool to have you on, a, a fellow presenter on markets, and thank you for being such a loyal listener. I wanted to let you know. Uh, one of the most loyal listeners we have. We have some really loyal listeners, and he's here every day um, keeping me straight. Um, that's what I need. How are you well, doing, friend? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's what you know. We all look after each other. That's the joy of the show. Absolutely, and thank you so much for inviting me. And uh, quite excited to be here and, and talk to the traders. And you know, trading is great. You know, and uh, you know, we all have different ideas and, and different uh, outlooks of how we look at the markets. And that's what makes it so interesting. And everybody can make a profit. And that's what we. That's what we do. You know. Absolutely. So tell us, how did you get into trading? And um, uh, from there, we can just go wherever you want. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to just talk maybe three or four minutes about myself, and then um, we'll Absolutely. get into some of my philosophy and, and how I trade. And um, so I, I worked midnights uh, most of my career as a firefighter paramedic. I was actually a public safety officer in Florida that's a police officer paramedic and um, firefighter and I drove around in an SUV um, and then the last five years of my career I went to the fire side directly and um, I retired in 2008 as a captain and um, nine days later was on the Big Bird to Bangkok, Thailand. Never been here before however did three months of research and uh, came here for a three month tourist visa. Well my friends nine years later and in April it would be 10 years. Um, I'm still here and absolutely loving it. Um, I do in a, live in a um, resort town called Pattaya. Um, it's actually the province of Chonburi, um, which is big. It's probably close to 3 million people. But Pattaya is very small. And uh, it's just been a, a blessing that I've had two careers, and um, both of them I love dearly. I never regretted going to work in my first career, and I absolutely adore what I do in my uh, current career as a as a trader in retirement, and um, you know I I don't know it's it's just it's a pleasure. Um, I was very fortunate that I had uh, some really great um, uh, people that guided me in the right direction. Mentors, that's what I was looking for. That's what it's and, all about. Without a mentor, you're in trouble, right? Yeah, and I was I was very lucky. I uh, let me tell you how I got into works. You're gonna get a kick out of this. I was up at 3 o'clock in the morning, and I watched this infomercial, and the infomercial was on Forex, and this is back in 2005, end of 2005, <laughs> and it comes on, uh, Forex made easy, and it says, in three days, we're going to be at the Marriott Hotel in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. I said, oh, that's my day off. I jotted that down, and, and I went, and uh, they come up with this green and red arrow thing and um, actually the, the guy does his thing and the man in charge, the man with the plan, yes my friends, Blake Morrow. Walks <laughs> the I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> he is the man. And he goes through his spiel and he, he's a very, very well presented, professional, um, just unbelievable. And who does he introduce next? I don't remember the man's name, but this is the guy who started MB Trading, and they were just getting started, and we're working on a way to work together. Because yes, I did buy the two thousand eight hundred dollar uh, red and green arrow program, but back then you had to pay for eSignal to get your feed to get data. Right, so, right. Everything costed money. Nothing was nothing was free. Oh yeah, it was a hundred bucks a month for you for your data feed, and then I turned around and um, I watched Blake. Uh, it was actually six a.m. Uh, 
U U.S. time, Eastern Standard Time. Um, and I watched Blake on his uh, Forex show. And I don't remember the girl's name who he hosted it with, but she was beautiful. Um, <laughs> that had nothing to do with my trading, by the way. <laughs> and uh, and I and I did that, and I and I and that's how I got started in forex. Of course, I moved on from them and entered into another um, uh, group, um, and I stayed in that trading room for over four years. And at that time, in 2008, I retired from Fire Rescue. Nine days later, I came to Thailand, and I'm still in Thailand. And a year after I was in here, I was with um, FXInstructor.com, and uh, I was asked to be a moderator, and I've been a moderator for them ever since. Um, they've merged with another company called FXCL, and I'm not selling anything. Um, and they merged with another company called FXCL um, Markets, and um, I was able to. Uh, I'm. I've been with both of them now. Uh, gosh, it's going on over eight years. Uh, in April, it'll be nine years I've been with them. So I moderate every day. I do the Asia session um, from about 7:30 a.m. Well, that would be 7:30 p.m. Uh, as you would say, Wall Street time to about 9:15 um, um, Wall Street time. So about an hour and a half, an hour and 45 minutes, depending on how many traders are around. A lot of days they don't get nobody. It is Asia. I understand that, and uh, and that's what I do. A lot of my work that was behind the scenes. I do a lot of educational stuff. I do YouTube video, and that shot Ziggy. Thank you so much for being you, Ziggy. Um, wow, how we put this together in three days was really great. He worked with me it's and amazing, got it done. Yeah, and so generous. What a great guy. Your, um, your show starts exactly at the time I pick up my son at school at two thirty Hawaiian time. That's funny. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So. <laughs> so, I um, you know, and yeah, and, and and I love moderating, but I do a lot of behind. I do a ninety second, um, uh, video every day. It used to be a fifteen minute, and FXCL changed it to a ninety second. It's very advanced slides that you know move and all this stuff, and nice. it takes me about two hours to put this together every morning. So, wow. I'm at my computer about six fifteen in the morning. I'm getting started for my day, um, and I put this together. And if you're interested in seeing it, um, just go to FXCL Markets and look that up on YouTube, and you can see my 90-second videos. It's really cool. They get better and better. And yes, with the slide you saw of the advertisement with the bow tie, I do wear a bow tie. Why do I do that? <laughs> I didn't even know that was a video. I, I didn't know I could click on that. Wow, I'm so well, you can. I don't no, I think um, Ziggy took a snapshot of it. Um, but you can go to FX CL Markets on YouTube and you'll see it. Nice. Um, and you can see the video. And it's pretty cool. But the bow tie comes from um, Bloomberg from years and years ago by the name of uh, Tom Keenan, who does Bloomberg surveillance. Right, right, sure. If you didn't remember Tom Keenan, you always remember that damn bow ties he wears. And he still wears them as of yesterday. So I thought of the bow tie and I said, you know what? They might not remember my name. They might <laughs> not remember FXCO clearing. They might not, but they'll remember the crazy short guy with the bow tie. And <laughs> that's how I came up with it. That's the truth. And that's, that's cool. What it is. Um, I trade every day. I start it. 6.15 in the morning, I end about 11 o'clock at night. I do trade Asia, I trade London, and I trade about the first two hours of New York as I trade options, which we'll talk about in just uh, a little bit. Um, by the request of Ziggy, and I understand totally because I do videos, we need to take about a five-minute break, about halfway through, because we don't want um, him to have too big of a clop of video at one time. Right. So we're going to take a five- or six-minute break, probably about another five or ten minutes, and we'll come back, and then he can right. regain energy, and we'll, and then we'll get into it, and I'll stop like five minutes before the top of the hour, so you can go into the DAX. It doesn't um, matter. I, we can just keep going. I can do it while you're talking. It doesn't matter. I mean, um, okay. either way, because if you if you want to still cover more, we'll just see how it goes. Okay, but great. Awesome um, stuff. So let's talk about trading. Let's talk about some things that. You know, you might disagree with, and you might not disagree with, and that's the respect we have amongst traders, right? That I will tell you that I'm, I'm almost three quarters, past three quarters of um, Blake's friend Greg, uh, 
Michael Whiskey uh, book. And I always kept on wondering who looks over my shoulder when I'm trading. Well, I cannot believe how close this guy trades the same way I do. It's just absolutely amazing. Um, it's a great book if you get an opportunity to get it. Um, try to get it on a Kindle. It's like half the price. The book's going for like $42 retail. See if you can get a freebie or a Kindle. I got a Kindle version for half the price. Um, and it, it's a great book. It's worth the investment 100%. So let's talk about my trading. And, and, and my charts are very clean. And, and I'm a pullback trader. In other words, I let a move happen. I Fibonacci everything. You know, I tried to do a Fibonacci on a Thai girl one day, and she didn't understand, and I just blew that out of the water. Um, <laughs> so we just ended up having a bottle of wine together on a great night. Um, but the Fibonacci thing didn't go over too well. Um, yeah, that was a joke. <laughs> I know, but it was a joke. Um, but, yeah, I, I Fibonacci every day. I use Fibs in all my trading. Um, I do use an EMA, which is a 200 exponential on all my charts. I do use a 10 and a 55 sometimes, um, but I'm big big, big into what's going on left of the chart. I can always look at the current three or five candles, but I want to look left of the chart as far as my chart will go back because you will notice, as we all know, that Forex repeats itself, and that is the biggest gift of Forex. It repeats itself, and price levels repeats itself. And Now, I have my numbers that I like. Of course, the whole number, right, the zero, zero. And I like the 20 and 80. Um, I always find that at the 20 and 80, there's always a bounce to a bubble at those price levels. And also the 50%. I'm big on the 50%, but I'm more big on the 20 and 80 levels. I always keep a pretty good eye on the 20 and 80 levels. But I'm a big man of levels, and, and I'm big, big on Fibonacci. I use Fibonacci on everything. And I find that just... Um, so you're it. saying like if it gets to 20, it either breaks through and goes or 20 and fails, and the same with 80, because I notice 80 a lot too. That's a number I really notice a lot. Um, yeah. Well, I and I look back on the chart, of course, you know, I, I, try, I get my bias from a daily chart and a four-hour chart. Now, for me to pick a bias, that means that the daily chart and the four-hour chart have to match. If they don't match, they're off my watch list for that day or that week, right? Um, then I do all my golden work on a one-hour chart. I do 99% of my analysis on one- and two-hour charts, and I enter on a 30-minute chart. Then I revert back to my hourly chart for my exits. And before I hit that button, everything's in line. I know where my stop's going to be. I know what I'm looking to get out at. Um, I know exactly what's going on, and trade management, my friends, is the key to success. And what is the most important thing about trading Forex? And don't tell me making money, that's not the right answer. The right answer is capital preservation. Live to trade for tomorrow. Right? We want to be able to open our account up and not have no big red banner saying, you're closed, no money. Right? You don't want one of those. Um, so money management is real important. And for somebody who's going into their 11th year of trading, you'd be quite surprised how small um, I trade. Now, my belief is I trade a lot, but I trade small. So um, I can be in five, six positions at one time. In Forex, only about five because I never trade more than 5% of my account in Forex, never. So that gives me five trades at 1%. And that's okay with me. I don't have a problem with that. Um, once one gets to break even, that allows me to enter into a second trade. I'm normally in a trade from anywhere from an hour to five hours, six hours. I do give a time limit. I do think time in trading is a very important aspect of trading. If that thing's hanging around too long, um, I'm out of there. Um, I try to get as close to break even, and I'll just bail out. Um, I don't keep trades overnight, I would say 97% of the time, and that's my psychology, my brain, my sick brain, because I end up getting up every hour and want to look at charts. And it's kind of funny because in options trading, I keep options trades on from 25 days to 40 days, and I don't have a problem with that. But in Forex, <laughs> I don't keep in trades overnight, so it's kind of here, you know, it's kind of crazy, right? <laughs> it's like I don't like it's like I don't like tomatoes, but I love tomato sauce. So put that all together, you know. I love ketchup, right? 
you know. Well, you know, actually, it makes sense though because with the options, you can only lose so much. But I mean, you know, with forex, you know, and you, when we see what you know, some kind of crazy news comes out, I mean, it's endless. Yeah, yeah, so and, it make sense. and hopefully your stop gets recognized, and that's not a guarantee, you know. So it should be, but it's not. <laughs> that's just the way it is. So my forex is very, um, very disciplined, and and that's taken me a long time, friends. That I didn't do that, and I didn't get that in my first three or four years of trading. It's taken me a long time of listening to people and and watching people, and you know I don't expect everybody to go out and go trade the way Ty Willie trades. No, if you pick one thing out of what I say that helps you, I'm a success in my talk today. Um, you know who's the most important trader in this room right now? The person who was the last person to say I want to trade forex. The newest person to Forex is the most important person in this room because we want them to feel comfortable and know that Forex works and know that you lose trades. And I love in this room that people say, hey, listen, you know what? I just lost this one. And you know what? We give them encouragement to get back in and take a look at something else. And, you know, that's the nice thing about this space um, is that we can do that with respect, you know, and I, I just think that's a great thing. So as I'm a pullback trader, I'm always looking for that 161 extension level um, for take profit. I love that area, providing I don't have support and resistance. And again, left of the chart. I like wide open spaces, by the way. I like when I'm going short on a trade and like there's no price action for like 50 pips, right? And then you get the mess left of the chart. I love a wide open space. That's like a green light for me. You know, that's just like if I'm a resistance and I get a bearish candlestick, man, I got a wide open space and it makes sense. You know, go for it, right? My right, drawdown. Right, nothing is underneath it. You're meaning, like no support underneath it for a while, where, where there's some room yeah. to rumble. Yeah, no, I totally agree. That's that and risk that, to reward he's talking about, folks. Yeah, and there's less drawdown. I'm, 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 I'm putting a 15 or 18 pip drawdown. I don't like 50 pip stops, folks. And I, my opinion is, a stop loss is used for emergencies. My stop. I don't wait for something to hit my stop loss. If the trade's going against me. After three hours, and I got three candles against me, I'm out of there, right? right. I can always re-enter. I'll take. The, I'd rather take a 10 pip hit or a 15 pip hit than a 40 or 60 pip hit, right? Stop losses are for emergencies in my book, and that's how I look at it. So I have no problem, um, you know, getting out early. I can always re-enter. Trade small, trade a lot, and I use that same theory in options also. Um, so it just it's, it's just the way I trade. I ha I watch eight currency pairs on a 24 inch monitor. Um, I do like trading view a lot. I um, and if your uh, broker is on trading view, I really urge you to um, pay their forty dollars a year, or thirty five dollars a year, and get trading view and be able to trade off of their charts. They have something really cool on it, and one is because I'm a big guy about the percentage. They have an option when you're trading on their platform of how much risk you want to do. So you can put your whole order in there and say, I only want to risk 2% of my account. And it readjusts everything and tells you how many lots or many wow, lots nice. to trade yeah. or not to trade. And that's a really nice option. Um, and any of the platforms that I talk about um, in this session is all okay because I use the same platforms that the wise trade moderators are using so um, I'm not going to mention anything new uh, but the trading view has that, that one option that I really like and uh, it's really just really a cool option so I wait for a trade to happen I'm a very biased guy um, for those of you who have gone to my website and have read any of my I do a analysis every day on a, on a currency pair and you always say I'm always talking about my bias my bias my bias and and you know, I've been in this room, I think it's two years now, and, and, you know, I always talk about, like, I've been, you know, bearish on the, on, the, on the euro, on the pound, on the Aussie, on the New Zealand, and it's all worked out for me. You know, I do count a trend, but I assume probably about 12% of my trading, I count a trend. I, I'll wait two days to get my trade where I want it. I do not chase price. That's one thing I was hit with a hard hammer in my early days was do not chase price let price come to you and you know and that fits my personality how why where how come who knows I don't know 
you know, maybe it's that Johnny Walker Red. I don't know. I don't know what it is, you know. Um, <laughs> nothing wrong with a little bit of Johnny Walker Red. You know, it's okay. Um, <laughs> and, a, and a banana. Keep the potassium up. Um, but, yeah, it's, it, you know, Forex is, a, is a, a learning thing. You know, I learn something new every day from somewhere, from somebody. Um, I learn something new. Um, you know, my hands really go up to um, Michael, um, harmonics Mike. Um, I, I followed him from the first time I heard about him. He puts out some awesome stuff. I love harmonics. Um, I do use Ninja Trader as my um, main platform. Um, I can trade off it also, um, but Ninja Trader is my, my, my platform of choice. Um, uh, I just think it's an easy platform to work. It's an easy platform to, I can do whatever I want with it. I like that everything is just hit a button and you go. Um, uh, and, it, and when I do my videos, it, it's really easy to put text in and stuff like that and lines. And it's just an easy platform and it's, it's really user friendly. And like I said, I can trade off the chart, which is so important. I, right. I never liked having to have an MT4 chart and then have to go to another chart to trade from. I, I want to do everything on one chart. Absolutely. Um, it just makes it so much easier, right, Chris? I mean, it just oh, yeah. it makes, it makes, it makes it, if I got to go back and forth, I mean, I'm wasting time, right? Even well, I want to be able to get into a trade from anywhere on my platform. Anywhere on my platform, I want to be able to get in, get out, do whatever. I shouldn't have to go to a box to do that. That's stupid. Absolutely, I am. I'm with you on that. So my training, you know, is no big is no big secret, and it's very easy. I wait for the pullback. I wait for a confluence area. I'm always looking for that confluence, right? I want to see maybe a moving average, or I want to see um, a pivot point, which I I, don't, I haven't used pivot points in a long time. I I'm a big fib guy. I fib everything. I wait for a fib. I might see uh, the 200. I, you know, I might see uh, a couple of moving averages like a. Um, 1055 cross or anything that crosses a 200 is a big wake up in my book um, and and I watch price action price action rules my friends price action is just so out there and and so valuable <coughs> oh excuse me if you're not into what's going on left of the chart traders if I teach you anything today I want to teach you please please watch price action left of the chart It'll show you so much. If you got a bunch of junk left of the chart, it's not time to trade. That's how I look at it. Just wait. You know, well, I hear, you know, people email me all the time, and, and, and when they say they're bored, I tell them you're an excellent trader. Trading should be boring. Trading, that's, it should be boring. I don't even want to click the mouse five or six times a day. <laughs> right? I don't want, right? I want you're living to in that time frame for sure. I mean, you know, there's, there's no question. That yeah, I mean it's you're definitely pinpointing entries and, and I mean it's a very profitable space without a doubt, especially if you're really waiting in a manner where you're using extensions the way you are, where people have been flushed out and you're finally that guy who's coming in at the last moment and going, all right, let's do this. I like it. Yeah, I think it was you that taught me. You know, do the opposite of what everybody else is doing, and you probably win most of your trades. <laughs> I, you know, well, let's I mean, take a. Let, listen to these bimbos on CNBC, Bloomberg, all the financial channels, right? You know, I saw um, um, Mark um, the other day on Bloomberg. Um, Chandler, Mark Chandler. Right, right. Uh, he yeah, was on sure. Monday. Right, he's he was great. on there on Monday. Um, great guy, smart guy, but he just basically said the same thing I just said without saying it that way. I mean, I'm sure it wasn't politically correct if he said that, but he basically said, if they're all telling you to go long, go short. You know, I mean, don't trade your own stuff. You know, just support resistance levels, Fibonacci, one or two indicators. You know, Greg talks about, he only uses three indicators. And I, I use the same. I'm a big channel guy. I'm a big um, trend line guy. I'm a very big trend line guy. Um, the only difference is I don't hold them on my chart. Once that trade is over, I take them off my chart and I put new ones. Um, that's the only difference between me and probably a lot of traders is that I don't keep them on my charts. Right. Um, I like clean charts. I want to be able to see prices. Well, you know, technically, once the tr once the trend line gets 
you know, goes they goes the price goes through trend line a couple times, then it doesn't have any value anymore. They're not using it, so it may as well come off. You know, all of a sudden it's not going to become worth value, or you're going to trade off of it if it's lost its value. So that makes a lot of sense, and it's really important to be saying to folks about the left side of the chart, because I mean, you know, if you're shorting, you're selling rips. If you're buying, you're buying dips, and when you're buying dips, it always looks scary. When you're selling rips, it always looks spooky. So that's what he's saying, folks. But it's good stuff. I really, I haven't brought stuff up like that in a while, so that's cool. And listen to, look at your, look at your support and your resistance levels, and and don't listen. Trading is hard enough. Don't make it any harder. You know, you know, be simple. And if your gut tells you no, and 50 people tell you yes, you know what? Go with your gut, and I bet you'll be right. You know, go with your gut. Now, you know I love this show. I, I think the world of Chris and, and Michael and Ziggy, and, but I can't get into the DAX thing. I listen to it. I love watching people like Nick making 132 ticks. I think it's great. It's just not my personality of trading. You know? Yeah, I, no, I know. So much respect for the people who do it and can make money. You know, the only reason why we had to go to this, the only reason why, um, uh, William, that we had to go to this is because if you have to remember through the summer, there was the boredom was just oh. ridiculous. Oh, it no, I agree. Election. I have nothing so against it. So what, what I reverted to was my old, um, the way I used to play the Open uh, with my mentor back in the day. And, I mean, you want to talk about extensions. I mean, we would trade the open um, the first five minutes and we trade stocks and um, and the, and the whenever they broke in that first five minutes you know you get a 161 uh, 261 of that first 30 minutes throughout to all, all the way into into the um, aftermarket it was crazy yeah, yeah it hit it yeah. to the dime too and once people started catching on it stopped working we started seeing all kinds of dojis every day was a doji Instead yeah. of just a, a huge Momo, because Momo was everything, and, and that's all it is. It's just Momo, and the and the joy of it is there's so much volume at that time of day. Is if you've noticed, you know, you you can get out, you know, and if you work with about 20 points on that DAX to get 40, 60, you know, you can do it, you know, in, in, a, in a manner where you're not. I mean, he doesn't ever get burned if you haven't noticed. But anyway, go back to what you were talking about. I'm sorry. Oh no, no, it's great. Well, you know what? We are right. 32 minutes, and I promised Ziggy I would at 30 okay, stop. Good. So let's, let's take it. a five or six minute break, and uh, I'm ready when you are. Let's just take a five minute break. That's all. I'll leave your mic hot, so when you come on and start talking, just go, and I'll be here already. I'm just going to take like three minutes, so I won't miss you. So we'll go five minutes. We'll go to like about um, eight after the hour, right after the whatever, 38 minutes after. Okay, everybody. Okay. Ty Willie in the house. Isn't this great? I'll be back. All right, we'll be back. All right, folks, I'm back. Uh, right on. All right, Ty Willie back, everybody. How lucky are we? This is great, man, I'll tell you. You know what's really awesome is I used to be able to trade like he does where you can just dedicate your whole day to it. And this is the way you're supposed to trade, really. I mean, um, you know, it's not – it's work. You know, it's not just sit down and trade stuff. So keep going. Let's do this. Thank you again. All right. Oh, thank you. Um, uh, just something I, I, I wanted to mention while we were talking about that other stuff was, traders, if you can do it and it's not going to be easy, get that vocabulary bottom and top out of your mind. You, you get that out of your mind, you will feel so much better because when you lose a trade and it goes through that top or that bottom, you're not going to beat yourself up. The market's going to do what the market's going to do. It's not the market to adapt to Ty Willie, right? It's Willie adapting to the markets. The markets are the markets. And I never use top or bottom. I'll use resistance or support. It's just so important that we that our vocabulary we just sink that into our minds so it's automatic. Um, because there's never a top and there's never a bottom. I've been saying for the last four years that gold is overpriced. Gold should be at eight hundred dollars an ounce. You know, gold is ridiculous. And, you know, Thai girls love gold. I won't buy my girl gold. She asked me the other night, won't you buy me a little, teeny little gold? I said, listen, I'll buy you 15 plants if you want. I'll buy you 15 dresses. I'm not buying you gold. It's overpriced. Right? So just don't use tops and bottoms. 
um, you'll feel so much better when you trade it. A um, couple of things, uh, like just to reiterate, because I want to get into options a little bit before we wrap this up. If you have a pen and pencil, let me give you a, a couple of things to write down, and you can contact me anytime. And I don't charge for nothing, folks. If you wanted two hours of my time on a Saturday, I'll give it to you. I don't charge nothing. I'm giving away what was gracefully given to me, paid or not paid, it doesn't make a difference. And I like giving it away. And if I can help somebody do one thing better in their trading, make them successful, that's what it's all about. I get more of a reward than that than anything. Um, so Twitter, you can get me at Twitter at WKG1960. I'm on Twitter, and I do tweet. Um, hold on, hold on. We want you, I want you to repeat that again so I can put it in the channel for everybody. Hold on. Let okay. You here. Uh, I'm a slow typer, so hold on. Okay, and this is his Twitter. So, um, uh, shoot, at shoot. WK. Is this all lowercase? WK. G. Mm-hmm. 1960. 1960. Okay. okay. Email. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. This is great stuff, you guys. Take advantage of this, really. I mean, go ahead. And that's my name. It's William. Okay. W I L L I A M, right? Uh, Gilday. G I L D A Y. G I L D A Y. All one word. Yep, at gmail.com. Wow, that's a hard one. I got that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go, guys. There you go. So. And let me give you one more. Okay, yep. And this is um, my Facebook. If you want to see what I do in Thailand and some of the fun stuff and some of the cool music shows I go to that are just a bunch of guys having a good time doing uh, – I don't do Some Facebook, but go ahead anyway. <laughs> go ahead. I don't have a Facebook account. I, I canceled mine. My family's just oh, I, too I out love of control. My, I love my Facebook. i got to be honest. Anyhow, it's just William Gilday. Okay. If you just look up Facebook, William Gilday, and um, that's it. That's my Facebook. You can find me there. And I'm pretty sure it says Thailand um, on on them. And that's it, folks. And you cool. can get me anytime. If you get me on Twitter, my... Apple Watch. Oh, sorry, I wasn't going to endorse Apple, but I'm, Apple, I'm an Apple guy. Um, so, yeah, um, I'll get alerted to you, and I will. if you send me an email, I guarantee you within 15 hours, um, I will get back to you. If you do anything on Twitter and you want to come and follow me on Twitter, please put trader, um, put wise trade, put something that I know you're a trader because I get a gazillion requests, and I deny all of them unless I know you. Okay, so please, you go. good um, for you. Just, just put trader, um, Ty Willie, Ty Willie Nuthead, whatever you want to put. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is? What was it? Archie uh, Meathead, Meathead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you you go. Meathead, right? Mm. All right. So, wow, time flies when you're having fun. I, I got about ten minutes left, and I want to talk about options. Traders, I got into options about three years ago and on a fluke, and uh, I, I really absorbed into it. It was really kind of really wild that it was in in this options thing, and and I started learning options. And I, I watched this um, guy because I I scan YouTube on my Saturday and Sundays like I have nothing better to do, um, and I and I I, I scan this thing and, and I watched this guy doing vertical spreads, and he got me hooked. And um, I don't know if he's still around. I used to get emails. I haven't gotten any emails. Anyhow, if you ever want to look at him, it is, uh, his name is, um, I think it's Options Guru is his name on Twitter. Um, I mean on, um, yeah, on Twitter. And, and I'm sorry, on YouTube. YouTube, I'm sorry. And so, you know, I got really into it. And I've gotten more and more into it over the years have gone by. And I, I'm not... I'm a really honest guy. If you ask me a question, I'm going to answer you honestly, whether you like it or not. Um, last year in Forex, I made money. Last year in options, I got the hell beat out of me, um, October, November, December. But I'm very lucky. My negative number was $16.71. Man, I should be playing those numbers in the Thai lottery every week. 
Um, yeah, sixteen dollars and seventy-one cents negative for last year in options. Um, wow, it's a push. Was I lost what? You know, yeah. Um, people have lost millions, thousands, and I came out basically break even on a year that was crazy. So you can imagine the profits I had when I was in going into an October, right? No, <laughs> November, December. Um, but you know what? It was a learning experience. I sell options. Very rarely do you find me buying a call. Um, I'm, I just so what happened? It just got away from you. Some trades. Is that what happened? What happened was I was in my 18 positions that I put on in October, not thinking about the presidential election, because you know we were too busy talking about Brexit and this, you know, everything else that was going on, and and you know I'm following these trades, you know, and they don't look bad. And then one's getting bad, and then another, then it comes back, and then it goes bad again, and then it's coming back, but it's not coming back where. I want to take a $500 hit, right? So I'm like waiting and waiting and waiting and and be, you know before I know it I get to expiration week. You know, and and over that, you know, over that 40-day period, 42-day period, I just I just took I took a I took a lashing. I mean, I'm honest with you, I took a lashing. But year on year, you know, I kept 99.9% of my capital, right? I really didn't lose anything. Um, and remember, I've taken money out to pay for things or, you know, whatever. So that doesn't even include the money I've taken out to put in my pocket. So, you know, I always believe in paying yourself, folks. Always pay yourself. <laughs> you know, if, you, if you've got profits, you can take it off the table. Take them off the table, right? Always pay yourself. So anyhow, I got into options and I got into vertical spreads. And uh, I, so for me to buy... I'm sorry. Do you keep like a base uh, a, amount in your account then, and then drain out everything above that? Is that what you do? Uh, I'm not that. I'm not that disciplined in it. I keep. I I do keep a base where I won't go below it, um, but I try to just keep building it and building it. But you know, if if something breaks down and I got to pull out a thousand dollars, I pull out a thousand dollars. Like I don't even think about it. I've had some big medical issues over the last six weeks, and it's costing me quite a bit of money, and. Um, I had the old cancer cancer scare, and you know. Oh God! Well, we hope you're okay, man. That's terrible. Oh, just yeah, huh? I'm I'm still here. I'm breathing. Right? Um, you know, they say my heart's enlarged and my bone density is like of a seventy year old. So now they got me on hormone therapy, and it's just it's been a horrible six weeks. But you know what? I'm always about that glass is half full. Did you, you know break what? a bone? Did you hurt your? Did you hurt a bone? No, I I did. I I went into the doctor to just to. I did an annual physical. My hospital said we're doing a special. I went in, did this physical. They tested everything. They potted every hole in my body. They did everything, and we'll they came up with all this. And they, and well, yeah, the, the, the cancer thing. Then my heart's too big, and then I got hypertension. Then, the, well, they call it <laughs> hypertension. It's not hypertension in my book. You have to be in a paramedic for 27 years. Um, right, you've calmed but, down. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean. Um, and then, you know, they, they say my bone density is like horrible, and it is. So now I'm on hormone therapy, and they gave me a shot three days ago, and my butt still hurts. Wow, that was not a fun experience, but it's a three-month injection. But, you know, everything else has worked out. It's, it wasn't cancer, by the way, thank God. And wow. But going through the process is sleepless nights. I, you know, anybody who's been through it, you know what it is. But let's get back to options. I don't want to get on that soapbox. <laughs> It's an old soapbox, thank you. Um, but anyhow, yeah. Well, we're glad you're feeling better. Yeah, thank. Yeah, I'm feeling okay. I'm fine. Um, so now what I do is I buy and sell puts, okay, and I buy and sell um, call options, okay. But I'm mostly into the selling. I like selling puts. I like buying puts, um, and that's what I do. And I'm I'm a person of not I, I lost so much money buying other people's product. Well, I bought somebody else's product six weeks ago, and the last guy's name is Soberman, I think. Uh, I think his name is Mark Soberman. It's been around for 25 years, which I didn't know, by the way. Oh, I researched this company upside and down before I bought their product. Well, it's been the greatest thing I ever did. They trade exactly the way I trade. 
the only nice thing is I look at 16 instruments, in other words, ETFs or indices or stocks on my, on my, on my platform, okay? The nice thing is this basically puts alerts on my, my platforms quickly because um, I don't have hours and hours to go through every stock and do history and all that stuff, right? Yeah. Also, they don't use time charts. They use range charts, which makes it a big difference. And most of their trades are in it no more than three weeks at the most. And it's a very disciplined thing. And the nice thing is they're not they're – trade, they're trade alerts, but they're not trade alerts. You can get in where you want. You can do what you want. That's what I like about it. And the, the other thing is normally you have two or three days to either get in or to get out or to move you to break even. They even show you where to go. Um, and it's all in dots and stuff on your charts. It doesn't clutter my charts. Um, and it's just the way I like it, you know. So do you and notice a lot of your entries happen like within the first week after expiration and then go until like within the first week three before? Days. Two to three days. Two to three days. And then they days go all the way up until right before that they expire, right? Like about a week before when it no. starts getting wild. They go, they go, they, I'm out of them usually. They're quick. Uh, two weeks, I'm usually out of it. Yeah. So you you don't, yeah you get your you get your profits out of it. Like so, a lot of times, what you look for like fifty percent is that your target? They do it. Yeah, they do it. Yeah, I would say it's probably between fifty and sixty percent. And when they say to get out, like they have an exit, I get out, even if it's still going. I'm very. They said be disciplined, even if it keeps going. If we say this is your exit, exit. And I've been you don't really on to keep running, huh? Why wouldn't that be? I mean, because a lot of stock no. options expire worthless. There's a reason. I'm going to tell you why, Chris. Yeah. One, I have to put in OCO orders because, remember, New York session is the middle of the night for me. So I'm not awake to catch. Oh, yeah. My alarm I don't mess with that either. I don't touch that. Yeah, if I can't be able You're no. in the same boat I'm in. You see, I, I yeah. rely on because I put price alerts on my charts. These alerts that they put on those option charts don't, don't trigger my trade. I've got to trigger the trade. I'm in control. And like I said, I'm not awake at 3 in the morning or, you know, right. three, 2 in the afternoon when it's the busiest time, it, you know, coming up to New York close in two hours. So I'm not around for that. So I have to put price alerts. Now, I get my price alerts on my watch, I get it on my Google phone, I get it on my iPad. You know, I get them, but I don't get them in the middle of the night. But I can still get in the next day. I still have time to get in them. And if I it goes past me, I look for the pullback to the entry spot, and about 30% of the time it won't pull back to that, I can still get in. But I'm looking at 18 instruments. I got plenty to trade. And if I miss wow. one, I miss one. And I'm trading big Man. names, folks. I'm not trading penny stocks, nothing against that. I'm trading Google, Facebook. Right, of course. You yeah. want chunky moves. You need chunky moves so you can have chunky stops. It makes sense. Yeah, volatility. I need stuff that's moving, exactly. I need product that's moving. I don't want to be looking at a thing that's going sideways, you know, for three weeks. No, I don't want that. So what's right. your favorites? Do you have any favorites? Yeah, yeah. Let me uh, – give me 2.2 .2 seconds and I'll – Oh, um, okay. I, uh, this is that. These are my pairs: um, the Spiders, the Triple Qs, Wells Fargo, C for City uh, Bank, um, Facebook, Apple, Netflix, um, XLE, which is a fuel company, Halliburton, Costco, XRT, um, FXI, Caterpillar, Gold, Tesla, and FSLR, which is another fuel company. And what and about that, Domino's Pizza? <laughs> well, you know, that was I'm funny joking. about Domino's because when I was in the state, I loved Domino's. We have them in Thailand. Uh, Domino's came to Thailand about two years ago. Um, so they're in here. It's amazing. We have, we have all the American companies here. We got uh, sure. Domino's and we got a little. Is it popular? Do people oh. actually go there, the locals? No, no, I don't go there. What are you crazy? No, nobody does. No Thai people would go, right? Who goes there? Tourists only? No, probably the Thai people probably if the Thai people can afford it. Um uh yeah, tourists go there. Um you know, there's a lot of expats here and there are a lot of people from England and all over the world that are here and and they go there. I mean 
Pizza's wow. big here, but you know, I'm from the Bronx in New York City. I've eaten the best pizza in the world. I can't wait I don't to show anybody. That company. You know, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, short that company. Um, so, so yeah, and um, yeah, it's, it's it's really cool. It's just my, my I guess. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm running down my last couple of minutes here, and I just want to end on a couple of positive things. And well, one, is, one last question on the on the options: Do you try sure. to be market balanced? Do you try to have the same amount of um, puts and calls sold? Is that a concern to you, or do no. you just go with whatever comes across the if it hits the um, is is a, is a trade? If I get an alert, I look at it, I analyze it, I decide whether I want to be in it or I don't want to be in it. The only indicator I have on my chart, other than theirs. For the alert is a Williams percentage R indicator, and we change the settings um, to 55, 10, and I think it's 14. Um, and that's the only other indicator on the chart, and that's it. Because remember, these are not time charts; these are range charts. Um, wow, interesting stuff. That's so, really cool. Yeah. So um, yeah. Uh, anyhow, um, to end on a on a on a great thing, I just want to again thank. You. Everybody put this together, and Ziggy and and Michael Harmonics, you are just awesome, man. When I grow up, I hope I'm just awesome. you are. <laughs> so awesome. He's, He's in the house right Ziggy, now. awesome. My hat's off to Ziggy. This man really busted his hump in two days to put this together. He had that slide ready in like three hours. The guy he doesn't play awesome. around. Yeah, no, I sent Ziggy some Hawaiian coffee. I wish I could send him a couple hundred pounds. He's such a great guy. Yeah, just thank you. So much. <laughs> and Chris, to you, I mean, we have a great time in the show, and I know a lot of stuff I say you can't repeat because it's pretty funny and um, pretty it is what it is. Um, but I try to keep the laughing. And, and, uh, I need I that. One thing I need that. Though. One thing to say, folks, and I got this from Greg, stop listening to financial channels. Take that news and place it under a rock and the sun don't <laughs> Don't I don't even to know it. what these people sound like anymore. I canceled cable. Yeah, but it's on Twitter just as much. You know, it's all repeat. Don't yeah. listen. Use what you need. I don't even tweet. To... You see that. Well, well, yeah, that's great mean, advice. I'll tell you, you know, because you don't want to get clouded. It's you know, it's it's hard enough as it is. Why would you want to put that cloud in your brain, that that fogginess, you know, that's going to end up getting you in a spot where you know you shouldn't be, right? Yeah, and you know what? All you need to know is when data is coming out. Is that's it going right. to affect your trade, or is it not going to affect your trade? Other than that, who the heck care what May says? What? Trump's twittering, or what Obama's talking about, how bad Trump is, or what you know, who cares? Right. Is it going to affect my Mark trade? Chandler, he can get you in out. trouble. You know, even Mark Chandler can get you in trouble if you get too caught on his bias. You know, I mean, it's just you know because and plus he's constantly writing new stuff like every other he day. He works so. for a big firm, by the way. Oh yeah. Brown and whatever he works for a big firm, so he's got some bias behind him. He has, he has to. to. Yeah, I know he has yeah. to. You're right. I mean, I don't read his stuff. If I see him talking, I was shocked to see him on Bloomberg, and he, he spoke very well. He, he's he, he's a pro. He's a pro, but well, I'm sure he's know, got. I mean, he's everywhere. everywhere. So you know what? When, when you're when you're when you're in that business, you know, you it's just like being a you know a star. You just go wherever you, they'll take you, cause, so that you can get as big as you can, and then retire as soon as possible, <laughs> right? <laughs> you can't blame Absolutely. the guy. Hey, listen, you know, Ty Willie, if you ever want to get mic'd up again. And anybody else too? Like I said, we want to make this happen more often because this is this is what it's about. It's about you guys, and and getting hearing about how people do it, and and understanding, especially the new people, how much work goes into being successful. If you got if that's anything you got out of today, how much work you get out of being successful, right? I mean, you work hard to to make your pips, make your points, to make your you know your options work and all that. It's not. You know, he didn't just wake up and figure out how this was going to happen. You know, you, he talked about how long he's been doing it, his, how his trials and tribulations. But like a lot of you guys, he doesn't take hits. You know, and that's what it's about, right, Ty Willie? Get out, get out. I'll tell you another thing. <laughs> if you want me, I promise you, this is the last thing I'll say. You know what? Teach somebody. Me, being a moderator and teaching makes you a better trader. Go find your 15-year-old child and bring him to Saturday. Let, let me show you about Bollinger Bands for five minutes, right? And you will <laughs> feel so much better. Being a moderator or take your neighbor, hey, you want to learn about this? 
Even if you only get five minutes out of them, it'll make your day. I'm telling you, it will make your day. That's why when people ask for help and they say, how much does it cost? Nothing. Wow, well, nothing. that's awfully generous. You know, I, give, I give it away for free. I don't charge for nothing. If I have an indicator you want, I'll give it to you. I'm not one of these people. I'm not looking for your money. Um, have you ever? Have you ever? Did you ever mess with any of the PayPal people? Did you ever get involved with any of that? The talk there. I, I, I not never. PayPal, I never. Pal talk. I meant Pal talk. I'm sorry. No, no, I don't even know what it is. Well, Pal talk. If you go on Pal talk, you get on the financial end. There are hundreds of people, and a lot of the a lot of the rooms are closed. It's it's called Pal talk, and uh, but the thing about it is that though the information is so much. It's hard to find a guy like you. You know what I mean. So you guys should be take this. You know, I have the I have the data for Ty Willie on the side here. Take this to heart because you know these kind of people are hard to find. You know that are going to give you the honest truth on trading. You know, most people have an agenda. You know, and they and they have to. Um, you know, they have uh, uh, talk. They have a book to talk. You know, and that's not what it's about. You know, it's like right. it's about it's about learning how to fish, and not getting a fish. So this is what he's doing for you. Thank you so much again, and again, anytime you want to be mic'd up, just let me know, and I'll click your mic on, and we, and you have something you want to talk about, or you want to say, or... Oh, thanks so much, you know, Chris. And if you, go to my website, <laughs> if, you go, if you go to my website, tradingwithbill.com, you'll see what my, my mission statement is. Helping losing traders become winning traders. That's my mission statement. What is it now? It's just tradingwithbill.com? Is that what it is? I don't even know. Yep. I'm terrible. Tradingwithbill.com. And it's www.tradingwithbill. Bill. And if you just yeah. showed up, you guys, this is Ziggy's taping this, so um, he's going to tag me. And um, there we go. He's straight, there we go. And tag me too, Zig. <laughs> He'll tag me, and then, uh, and then you guys can hear the whole thing from the beginning because William's yeah. been talking for an hour now almost. And now we have the open of DAX, so we'll go right to that. Thank you so Cheers, much, Ty Willie. Hey, thank, thank you, you so, so much. Chris. Hey, have thank a great Chris. weekend. Oh, you're awesome. Thank you. Good luck. Okay. Man. Ciao. Well, I'm gonna, thanks, I'm thanks again. Close you out now. Okay. Wow, everybody. How cool was that? A guest trader from Thailand, and he left paradise for more paradise. Can you blame him? There's nothing like being on an island. I lived in Florida, and it's nothing. Florida's great, but. Please don't make that your end. I guess it's better than having to be a lot of places, but...